Captain Turkey? Well, I wouldn't mind, but honey bunch wouldn't stand for it. Too many pretty women here. <laughs> What's the matter? Where are you going? The ship will be sailing in a few minutes. You'll miss it. That's just what I intend doing. My plans have changed. I'm remaining here in Istanbul. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Goodbye? Mr. Wilson? Oh, what kind of talk is that? When did you stop calling me Larry? Now. Thanks for the laughs on the trip. Oh. Everything aboard ship was just for laughs, huh? You could have fooled me. In fact, you did. The ship will be sailing in a few minutes. You better get back to your piano, Mr. Wilson. So I get the big brush out. That's it. Yes. Fine, fine. Nobody followed you? Nobody. It had been too long since I saw you last. Yes, a lot has happened. How was it in Brussels? I haven't been in Belgium for some time. For Monte Carlo, how was it there? Exciting, no? The usual thing. Cigarette, please. Monsieur, the husband. Uh, what of him? My husband is dead. I'm sorry, that. It's all over, and words will not bring him back. Now I live only for the present. What is this job Hassan is so mysterious about? A very big thing. There will be a lot of money in it for each of us. Is that all you can tell me? At present. Hassan will tell you more. Where are we to meet him and the girl? At the Café Simita. You are to go in alone. Ask for him. He will be waiting. Routine. Watch her closely. You'll substitute for her in the final show tonight. Tonight? But isn't it too dangerous here? No. We've planned carefully. Now look across the room. Do you see the young Egyptian sitting by himself? His name is Ahmed Rashid. He lives in Cairo. You uh, always dance for him. Do you understand? No. Not exactly. He's the son of Sadiq Rashin, one of the wealthiest pashas in Egypt, and a collector of rare jewels. Through the son, you meet the father. Oh, I see. And through the father, I meet the rare collection. Is that it? Precisely. You'll learn more about that later. Starting tonight, you will be the flame of Istanbul. And you will leave here by plane before daylight for Cairo. Cairo? Yes, your next engagement will be at the Café Sahara in Cairo. I'll see you there. Indeed. Yes. I am the Café Sahara. I own it. The girl's real name is Marie Courot. Conveniently, she's also French. And now your passport, please. 
As Lynette, you must drop out of sight for a time. Let me have your passport. Starting now, you will be Marie Courant. What happens to Marie? Has she agreed to all of this? Naturally. All arrangements have been made. When we have the Pasha's collection, your job in Cairo is finished, and Marie will return to her role of the flame without anyone being the wiser. You're sure she won't talk? Very sure. All right. I'm ready to meet her. The two of you are not to meet. Backstage, there's a dark wig and makeup. The rest is up to you. What do you think? Excellent. You must wear that wig until you get your own hair dyed the same color in Cairo. Oh, well, uh, from your young Egyptian admirer. How well does Ahmed know Marie? Not as well as he'd like to, as you can see by his gift. So far, his adoration has been from a distance. Or she may have spoken to him when she passed his table. You mean he's seen her without this veil on? I don't know. In any event, you've made yourself look enough like her to fool almost anyone. It's the chance we'll have to take. But the girl's voice, their conversation. What little conversation they might have had could only have been impersonal. And now, my dear, our young man is burning to know whether or not you will meet him in Cairo. Ready? Come. Quickly now, and don't forget her passport.
hoover or the magnificent bargains that can be obtained. These works are the best. They will wear for hundreds of years. And for the finest food and entertainment, the Café Sahara, the most charming café in Cairo. And the flame of Stamboul, when she dances, ah, Salome reincarnated. That's the same dancer we saw back in Istanbul. She's terrific. Yeah, but we've seen her act. Where is the Bazaar of Harun? Ah, the Bazaar of Harun, the magnificent. This way, please. This way. <laughs> Say, I, I've never seen this girl dance. I'll see you folks on the boat. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Kentucky bourbon? Good. Important. Good. <laughs> Looks like that piano player could use a tall, cool one. Seems kind of weak once he got tired crossing the ocean. Make it a double this time. Buy one for the piano tickler. Appreciates good music, huh? In your eye, my friend. <sighs> Ahmed again. Flowers, gifts, invitations. What am I supposed to accept one of those invitations? Sue, you're extremely nervous, my dear. Of course I'm nervous. That American, the piano player, he was with me on the ship, Istanbul. Did he recognize you? No, I'm sure he didn't. But if he saw me without the veil... Don't worry, he won't. Joe will take care of him. And now, my dear, compose yourself. Ahmed has asked permission to visit you backstage. Keep your veil on and talk as little as possible. 
But what am I to say when he invites me to his home? He's sure to ask. You think of some excuse. Later tonight, I'll take you to the man from whom we all get our instructions. He'll tell you when you may accept the invitation. Now I'll bring Ahmed to you. You'll be amazed if you knew what I can do to people just by, just by playing a little piano. Now, look at, look at me. Put up some fresh air, sir. I'll be back soon I can. Mademoiselle, how wonderful to see you again. Thank you, Monsieur Rachid. I beg you, call me Ahmed. Ahmed, then. Mademoiselle Marie, your, your voice, it sounds different. You are not ill. No, I'm quite well. It must be nervousness. A strange audience, a different city. Of course. Please forgive my intrusion upon your privacy, but I had to see you. Please, mademoiselle, when may I hope to have you as my guest? For tea, perhaps, or luncheon at my home? Soon, Ahmed. I promise. It cannot be too soon. And now, may I ask but one small favor before I go? Would you... Would you please remove your veil? You're more beautiful than I had dreamed. Thank you, Ahmed. And now, if you don't mind... I understand. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Goodbye, Ahmed. For a moment, I was worried. You were worried. Sorry, Mr. American. What are you so sorry about? Hey, you're you're the bartender. That last drink was something in it. You huh? little something, not much. It was necessary, Mr. American. Where am I? In my room. Please, I was following orders. Orders? From the halls of Montezuma. How do I get out of here? I'll call your taxi. What color? No color. Where am I going? To a football game. Who's playing? Yale and Princeton. Who's the favorite? Yale by two touchdowns. Where I'll get you five, you're wrong. Tell that to the Marines. <laughs> that didn't take as long, did it? No. But you sure had me worried for a while. How'd you peg me? Look, mostly, I knew you'd be a piano player, but you'd be surprised how many tourists are piano players. <laughs> My name's Larry Wilson. Joseph Artamian. They call me Joe. Armenian, huh? Got a honey of an accent. Thanks. I copied it from my folks. I was born in Fresno, California. You know who I'm after, don't you, Joe? Sure. The voice. He's here in Cairo, all right. Or he was two weeks ago. But why he's here, I don't know. Wherever that guy is, something big is going on. Something big and dangerous. We have to get him, Joe. This time for keeps. It's not going to be a pushover. How did you know he was here? Regular channels. 
A beggar just walked into the U.S. consulate one day and told him. For a price. But when the department closed in, no voice. I'd like to talk to this beggar. So would I. But three hours after he left the consulate, they found his body. I understand it wasn't very pretty. We get no help from any consulate official here. Their orders are to ignore us, you know that. <laughs> and how I know it. How about that rat race you work in, the Cafe Sahara? Hassan, the goat that owns it, has been mixed up in the black market. But whether it's any more than that, I don't know. Hey, I have to get back to work. <laughs> I'll be there practically until daylight. Why don't you stay here and get yourself some sleep? I need it. I'm not used to drinking Mickey's. Make yourself at home, Mr. America. <laughs> okay, Joe. See you tomorrow. A nice way to greet an old acquaintance, Mr. Wilson. You're lucky I didn't break your neck. Why the pussyfooting in here with skeleton keys and a gun? And my wallet. You don't remember me, Mr. Wilson? Baraka. Little Louis Baraka. What do you know? Philadelphia, wasn't it? Yes, in 1942. Uh, vagrancy, that's what I picked you up for. It was burglary. And because of you, I was deported as an undesirable alien. Well, that's, that's life, Baraka. But why come sneaking into my room like this? I always gave you a fair shake, didn't I? Yes. Except you always made me tip my hat to you. Well, for that, you came here to shoot me? No, I, I only wanted to scare you a little, that's all. But no one ever seems to be frightened of Baraka. Well, you're not the type. Where did you get my wallet? You were taking a nap in the alley, and it dropped from your pocket. I was going to return it to you. Mm. I see you've already collected the reward for finding it. Naturally. I notice your passport says you are now a piano player, a professional musician. You no longer work for the United States government? No. Please, Mr. Wilson, I am not altogether stupid. You are an American government agent. And so is Joe, the bartender. I saw him carry you here. You did. Tell me, what do you hear from uh, Mrs. Barack and your young son in Philadelphia? If, if you think you can trade their safety for yours, you are making a big mistake. If anything happens... Now, wait a minute. I'm not threatening you. You know we don't do business that way. It just occurred to me that you might be planning a trip to Philadelphia. I was deported. You know I can never get back into the States. That might be possible. If you were helpful to the American government, you might get back. You might get off with a light sentence on that burglary rap. And they have family visiting day once a week. You could see your son. That's very good. On the other hand, there are people here in Cairo who would be appreciative in a financial way to learn the identities of two American government agents. Oh, that wouldn't be smart. Joe and I would be killed and you'd be paid for your information only once. Now, if we stay alive and undiscovered, you get paid every week by me. Plus additional bonuses for items of information and so forth. And if the so forth is valuable enough, maybe a passport to America. You promise? I'll do my best. That's all I can promise. Here. For the first time in my life, I work with a cop. Now, what are you doing here in Cairo? And what do you want me to find out for you? Help me get a job. 
playing the piano at the Café Sahara. But they already have a piano. You know, the piano player at the Café Sahara has not been looking well lately. As a matter of fact, he looks quite sick. He may even die. Oh, no, I, I just want his job, not his life. As you wish. Leave it to Baraka. So long, boss. What day is payday? The day I get that job. The fewer people who know my face and my voice, the better. It seems to me that... Your opinion is of no consequence to me. All you have to do is to see that Ahmed's interest in you does not change. I'm doing that. The gems will be in Ahmed's home in a few days. His father, Sadiq Rashid, will bring them with him from London. Yeah, why did you bring him here? Well, this evening he refused to deliver the usual list to me. He insisted that he must talk to you personally about something important. He may talk to me personally, but it had better be important. Please. If we are to be friends, you must trust me. Please, remove the blindfold. Do so. Very clever, even though I am somewhat disappointed. I had hoped to meet my employer face to face. Instead, I am first blindfolded and blinded. You're not dealing with fools. Excuse me, Your Excellency. I meant no offense. I will get to the point. Each day you pay me well for a list of arrivals due at the airport when that same list is published in the newspapers a few hours later. Why is that? I do not pay you to ask questions, Baraka. I apologize. It was a stupid question when I could answer myself. You want the list of arrivals before it is published in the newspapers. Let me warn you, the curiosity can be dangerous. We will continue to do business on the same basis as before. I understand. Pay him, Hassan. When blindfolded, we turn him to the cafe with Mademoiselle Corot. You are Mademoiselle Marie Corot, the Flame of Stamboul? Curiosity again, Baraka? Excuse me, Your Excellency. It is only I did not realize I was in the presence of a celebrity. You are very beautiful, Mademoiselle Corot. Take them back. Ahmed's father, Sadiq Rasheen, is not on any of tomorrow's incoming flights. No, the defense council must still be in conference. It shouldn't last much longer now. The girl's getting suspicious. Sooner or later, she's bound to discover there's something far bigger than jewelry involved. One of your jobs is to see that she does not find out until after we have finished with our work here. Once the police discover that this girl's gun was used in an Istanbul murder, do you think they will believe anything she says? But when she discovers she's stealing defense plans instead of jewels. She will be stealing jewels. Sadly, he keeps his important documents in the full stop of the jewel case. Now, please, let me do the worrying. I wouldn't trust that little monkey Baraka as far as I could throw him. Well, there's not much we can do about it. But suppose somebody else offers him more money. Good morning, my friends. I'm sorry to bother you so early, but I have something for sale. You two met? Yeah, I know the little snake. 
He really is an American. From America, I mean. Sure, he's a nice guy. If you treat him right and don't lie to him, he may even help you get to Philadelphia. Really? That's right. If you can convince me you're on our side. Of course I'll convince you. First of all, I have a fascinating piece of information about the flame of Stamboul. She's not the flame. She is an imposter. What do you think of that? Listen, if you think you can get a passport out of us by making things up... I'm not. I tell you, I know the flame. I have seen her dance often. In, in Athens, in Ankara, in Alexandria. I've talked to her. Very interesting. But this is not the same girl. I was standing not two feet from her, in the headquarters of a man I know only as the voice. A voice? Where was this? Did you see him? No. I was blindfolded when they took me to him. We're partners. In a way, we're in business. Keep talking, Baraka. What kind of business do you do for him? Well, as I told you, I'm a port at the airport. Hassan hired me to get him a copy of the list of incoming passengers each day before it's published in the newspapers. If he wants that list before it's published, so do I. From now on, you show it to me first. What about this voice? Well, he, he sits in the dark behind some lights. His voice comes from a sort of uh, a radio on his desk. Well, do you know where he's located? No. Pierre took me there from the cafe in a car. I was blindfolded. We drove for maybe, or maybe half an hour. When they removed the blindfold, I was in this strange room. And this, this voice was sitting behind the lights in the dark, so I could not see his face. Well, what was the girl doing there? I don't know. They blindfolded her, too, before we returned to the cafe. Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you arrive at the cafe this afternoon, I think you'll find they'll be needing a new piano player. Nice going. From now on, your job is to find out where the voice is located. I'll do my best. Things are picking up. What's next? You stick behind that bar for the time being. If something tells me I'll be playing piano at the Cafe Sahara by the night. That ought to lead to something. You idiot. Getting drunk and falling in front of a car, I ought to break your other arm. But I swear by Allah I had but one drink. And I did not fall in the street. I was pushed. Aha! Uh -huh, there you are, you rat! You poisoner, you miserable, no good throat cutting dog. I'll teach you to slip me a mess. Please, <laughs> rob me, you will you? Mistake. Make me miss my. Watch it. Those are you dirty no. <laughs> Come on, get up and fight. What's all the noise about it here? Uh, nothing, Sergeant. Uh, just a little disagreement. A little disagreement? Sarge, arrest these people. Especially him. He gave me a Mickey last night. A Mickey? Yeah. What is that? You see, oh. officer, this, uh, this American was drunk when he came in last night, and now he accuses my bartender of drugging him. Now, you know my reputation. Your reputation? Sarge, I tell you, I was drugged. Look, I play piano on a tourist liner, and the boat sailed without me on account of these, these thieves. Come on, take me to the station. I'll press charges. If you wish to press charges, sir, you're entitled to it. Yeah. Uh, now, may I see your passport, sir? Oh, uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, about those uh, charges, Mr. Uh... Wilson, Larry Wilson. Uh, Mr. Wilson, now maybe we can make some sort of arrangement. No, keep talking, but make sense. Well, now, we need a piano player here for a few days, and I thought perhaps in the event oh, that there were no charges... Oh, a job, huh? It's in order. Ah, thanks. How much? Say, $50 a week? I was making 75 on the boat, plus stateroom and food. Come on, Sarge, take me to the station. I'll slap a suit on this joint. Right. All right, $75. Free food. And no more Mickeys? Please, Mr. Wilson. Okay, Omar's the deal. I guess that's it, Sarge. Thanks for your moral support, anyway. <laughs> no hard feelings, boss. Now, uh, do we get a rehearsal? Oh, that won't be necessary if you play as well as you did last night. Oh, don't worry about me. I was thinking about her. 
Uh, we'll use the same numbers as last night. Okay by me, but I'd like to meet her anyway. Pardon me. Hi! My name's Larry Wilson, as you probably heard. Um, Mademoiselle Coudreau, uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, what's your first name? Marie. You know, I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I'm quite certain we've never met. Well, maybe not. The only Marie I ever knew was in Jersey City, and she was short and fat. Still, there's something about you. <laughs> well, maybe I just dreamt it. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me. You know, Omar, I think I'm gonna like it here. The name is Hassan. Okay. What time's the first show? Nine o'clock. I'll be here. So long, boss. Dressing room. Behind the stage, straight back through the alcove on the right. Build me another one of those. Be right back. Yes, sir. I must have fallen asleep. I'm sorry, Marie. I was just waiting to see you, that's all. See me? What for? Oh, now, what does anybody want to see a pretty girl for? I just thought maybe uh, tonight when we got through here, we might... Yes? Who's there? Yeah. Who's in there with you? Well, laughing boy himself. What do you want? Mademoiselle, should I throw him out? Uh, uh, you tried that once before today, remember? Pierre, stop that, both of you, and you get out. Okay, sister. Tell your boyfriends I don't like to have guns pointed at me. So long. You're entirely too quick with that gun, Pierre. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but that American, he... You leave him alone and keep that gun out of sight. Nice, eh? I got you a room next to the ladies, as you requested. Here are the photographs, all printed and developed. And the passenger list. I have performed three tasks for you in one night. You'll get paid for all of them. Nobody coming in tomorrow to get excited about. Here. I must admit you photograph very well. Also, you have a nice eye for a blonde. Who is she? Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Nobody's got a better right. You were the one who spotted her for a phony. 
She's the flame of Stamboul. What? But how could that be? We were on the boat together. She took this picture of me, and I took the one of her. She was a blonde then. And I thought, she's a great joker. She's crazy about laughs. I wonder what happened to the original flame. That girl's got a gun in her purse. Get it for me. Now, just a minute, Mr. Wilson. How can I possibly... Her room will be just like this one. It's a sense she'll keep her purse in the bedroom. I'll call her on the phone, which is in the living room. While we're talking, you go through her bedroom window, get the gun out of her purse, and bring it here. No, no, use that window. Miss Corot, please. Room nine. Yes? Who? Oh, Mr. Wilson. What? Yes, I... All right. No, I'm not angry, Mr. Wilson. All right, Larry, then. Now, if you... What? Well, perhaps tomorrow afternoon. Yes. Please, I'm quite tired now. Well, look, uh, let's make it definite, huh? Let's go for a little walk tomorrow afternoon. All right, I'll call you. Good night, Marie. Let's have it. All right, dig into that cushion and get that slug out. Hurry up. making blank cartridges. Make you ask questions? If you try selling this information to anybody, I'll break every bone in your little fat head. What makes you think I would do a thing like that? I'm your partner. Okay, partner. Give me that slug. Now, we've got to get this gun back into her purse. Oh, no, Mr. Wilson. If you telephone that lady again, she will hang up. I'll return the gun. You're going to phone her this time. Me? What can I say to her? I don't well, know. Disguise your voice. Uh, tell her you saw the show tonight. Try to make a date with her. I won't eat much time. Now, where is her purse? On the dresser. Okay. No, no, not from here. Use a pay phone somewhere. Come on, get started. And with you, my friend. You are well? Very well. And yourself? The same. Everything as usual. I'm glad. Good day. Sahara, Larry Wilson talking. Larry, your hunch was right. The information just came in at the consulate. The slug from that girl's gun matches one the police found on some unidentified girl's body in Istanbul. And the date's checked, too. 
I said this is the Cafe Sahara. You sure you got the right number? I get you. Somebody around, huh? I'll see you at the cafe at 9 o'clock. Well, next time, make sure you get the right number. Yeah, what? Close the door. Turn on the lights. Look under the mattress for a paper. So, you know about our little substitution, hmm? Who else knows? Not just yet. First, you must tell us a few things, including the names of his accomplices. Before I'm finished with him, he'll tell us what you want to know. But these Americans do not talk too much. Then you'll stay here in the room and wait. Whoever he's working with will have to come here sooner or later. Time in that chair. Not inside at the bar. You got that list. Sadiq Rasheen, so that's who they've been waiting for. Who? Sadiq Rasheen, he's on the defense council. I knew it had to be someone like that. Good. Then it is all solved, eh? You will call the police. Everyone will be arrested, and Baraka will get his passport back to America. I wish it were that easy. But Sadiq isn't my man. The guy I'm after is the voice, the brains behind this whole setup, and nobody knows where he is. We've got to let him go through with it, then we get him all. You mean I deliver this like I always do? Right. I'm going to find Joe. He's probably got hold of something hot or he wouldn't be lying low like this. We'll decide what to do. Then I'll meet you at his room after you deliver the list, okay? name your friend refused to give us. This I am going to enjoy.
Sheriff de Crachin is on his way. You know what to do now. What about Pierre? He hadn't returned from his errand when I left the cafe. If he's not there by the time you get back, go and get him. Hello, Hotel Cairo. Give me Mr. Wilson's room, please. I know, but try it again. in to have a little talk with you, Lynette. Leave your gun in your purse. Wouldn't be as easy to kill me as it was Marie Corot. Kill her? Marie Corot is in Istanbul right now. She certainly is. Lying on a slab in the morgue with a bullet in her head from your gun. My gun? We merely traded identities for a short time. Traded hers for the last time. I checked the markings on the bullet that killed her with those of the barrel of your gun. Either you killed her or you're being framed for it. Hassan. And now you're going to tell me why she was killed and why you and your pal Hassan are waiting for Sadiq Rashin to come back to Cairo. I don't know what you're talking about. If you think I shot Marie Kuro, why don't you turn me over to the police? I am the police. You're a man of many talents, Mr. Wilson. I know how one learns to play the piano. So I'm rather curious to find out how one learns to make love to the girl he intends to hang. Or do your police have a special school for that? That was on the level. I didn't know about you then. Not until long after you walked out on me. I didn't walk out on you, Larry. I had to go. There was no choice. But why, Lynette? Why? I can't tell you that, now that I know your connection with the police. Lynette, I want to help you. And you will hang for Marie Corot's murder unless you cooperate with me. Give me the answers I need. Tell me your side of it. Do you think I killed her? What can I think? If Marie Corot is murdered, Hassan must have ordered her death to prevent her ever disclosing that I took her place here in Cairo. Through Ahmed Rashin, I was to gain entree to his father's home. 
Once inside and with the aid of his father's secretary, it would be my job to steal the jewel collection. I've done things like that for Hassan before. Go on. The jewels are kept in a case. Jewel case? Yes, traveling case. The Pasha takes his collection everywhere. He's rather vain about it. But when in Cairo, the case is returned to the safe in his home. I have a luncheon date there tomorrow. Hassan was to go with me. It all ties together. Do you know that Sadiq Rashin is the Egyptian member of the Defense Council? He's returning with the approved plans for the defense of the Suez Canal. We've been tipped that Rashin keeps those plans hidden in that jewel case. It's the case you're after, not the jewels. Hassan's just a front. Who's running the setup? A man whose face I've never seen. That's the man we've been chasing halfway around the world. He's a spy, Lynette, with loyalty to no country, a mercenary selling information to the highest bidder. He's one of the most dangerous... You've got to take me to him. I can't, Larry. I've been blindfolded whenever Hassan took me to him. Like Baraka. If you were to let me go through with it tomorrow and followed me, I could lead you to the mall. It's too risky. If anything went wrong... They couldn't get away with the plans. You could take steps to prevent that. I wasn't thinking of the plans. You'd wind up better than Marie Corot. Larry, you're afraid for me? I don't want to lose you again, Lynette. Oh, Very touching. Turn around, Mr. Wilson. No, sir. He was right. It isn't the jewels you're out for. Stand over there. No, I said, don't. If you kill him, I won't go through with our plan. You'll do what you're told to do, or you'll be turned over to the police for the murder of Marie Corot. Go ahead. Tell the police. Then who will get into Ahmed's house for you tomorrow? We'll see about that. Open that door. Walk ahead of us. Sir, I told you never to bring the girl here without a blindfold. There was no time for that. Who is he? The piano player. He's the agent who was working with Joe. The girl refused to go through her part of the job if I got rid of him, so I brought them both along. Is what Hassan said the truth? Yes. Let him go and I'll keep my appointment with Ahmed. Let him go? Not yet. But when you deliver the jewel case to me, you will both be released. Sure, sure. We'll be released in custody of a morgue like Marie Corot in Istanbul. Get your hands up. Did you search him? Your Excellency, I have tremendous news for you. Uh, worth a great deal of money. You will never believe what I have to tell you. How did you find your way here? Well, I usually get free drinks from Joe the bartender at the Cafe Sahara. Tonight he wasn't there. So I paid him a visit to his room, and what do you think I found? Joe was dead. And Pierre... Pierre was dying. Hassan? Wasn't Pierre dead when you left? He looked dead. Go on, Baraka. What did Pierre tell you? First, he told me how to get here. Then, he said Joe the bartender was an American intelligence agent. And, and this will absolutely astound you. This, this piano player, he is one also. This isn't news to me. Oh, it is not news? You already know? So, Baraka's information is of no value. That's too bad. One moment. You're staying with us, Baraka. What? You mean I can join you, eh? With Pierre dead, you'll need another good man, eh? You won't be sorry. Maybe I can use you at that. Are you going to keep me here also? 
This is hardly the outfit I would choose to visit our maid at his home. You may return to your hotel and change. May I have my gun, please? Or am I to be left completely defenseless in case something should happen? Hassan will give it to you just before you leave for your luncheon. Oh, Lynn, don't go through with it. They'll cross you up the minute they get what they're after. I have to gamble, Larry. I don't want you killed. I'm so pleased you like it. You must know how much that means to me. You're very sweet. The luncheon was perfect. I, um, I wonder if I might have just another glass of wine. Oh, forgive me, Hassan. I'm sorry your father couldn't join us. He had to rush over to the ministry. He asked me to convey his regrets to you. He's most anxious to meet you. Perhaps we can dine together tonight. I'd love that. Wonderful. I'll pick you up at the hotel. No, I'd rather you telephone first. I have something to do this afternoon, and I might not get back to the hotel. But I'll give you a number where you can reach me. It's uh, Cairo 913. It's my dressmaker. I have a fitting there this afternoon. If you telephone and I'm not there, leave word. I will call you as soon as I get there. Cairo 913. A toast to my beautiful Marie and to my friend Hassan who brought it to me. Another toast to the hope that one day, Marie, Hassan, the Pasha just phoned. He's leaving the ministry. Quickly, Hassan. They're on their way back. It may interest you to know, Mr. Wilson, that our little scheme worked perfectly. As soon as the girl arrives, we leave, don't we? That's right, Baraka. To tell you the truth, I don't know exactly what to do with you. Why, take me, of course. I can be of help. I'll prove it to you. I'll do your dirty work. For instance, I'll take care of him for you, and believe me, it'll be a pleasure. You used to make me tip my hat to you. It is unfortunate you cannot tip yours to me now. So, tip your head! Not yet, Baraka. When I have the plans in my hand, then maybe I'll let you. No trouble? None. The girl never left my sight. I was an added guest at the luncheon. Now you're going to do something else. Untie him. My dear Lynette, I can't possibly do that. I have a suggestion. What about a suicide pump? With her gun. What could be more appropriate? <laughs> Clever, Baraka. Go ahead. Untie him.
just a little late. I think we are in time. This is my father, Sadiq Rashin. Good. The plans are in that one's pockets. We were expecting something like this, and the Egyptian police were alerted. Father, don't overlook the note. Later, my son. I'm afraid the young lady is under arrest. Oh, I don't think it'll be necessary to arrest her when I do some explaining. She stole those plans to save my life. And it's lucky for us she did. Otherwise, the voice and his little playmates would have cleared out of here, and we never would have caught them. Your argument in the lady's favor has merit. I was instructed to hand you this, an important mission for the Defense Council in Trieste. You will report there at once. Think you'll like it in Trieste? Yes, if you'll be there. Chief, a comforting thought has just come to me. You don't say. I'm not hot in Trieste. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.